what I'm talking about. If I put one Beatles song in a time capsule, it'll be this, because half of it's Lennon, half of it's McCartney. You know what I mean? Did you ever know that? I didn't know that. Read the news today, oh boy. God, I wish I knew how to play guitar. <laughs> I just ruin it. Tasteful accompaniment. You know this song? Yeah. No, I mean. You know I of could, it? Yeah, I could. You guys know this song? Play it. I don't know that song at you all. You never heard this song a day oh, in the life? You never heard this song? I haven't either. No. Oh. I've never heard it. This is a classic never, Beatles never song. Never heard it? Mm -mm. Wow. You never even heard this on the radio. No. Mm -hmm. I gotta be honest, I, I can maybe name one Beatles song. Really? Well, I, I, I know, I know it's a kids. crummy thing. And no, it's not a crummy you thing. Know? I, mean, you're, you're, I mean, you know, clearly you'd rather talk about, you know, <laughs> Kanye West. Flo Rida. <laughs> I'm all about Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know, Chris and I, uh, well, by the way, that's uh, that's Chris Stefano and Carly yeah. Aquilino. How was it? Aquilino? Aquilino. Aquilino. Yeah. Uh, comedians who are good friends of mine, and they're of the younger generation. Yeah. These are, how old are you guys? I'm 28. You're 28. I'm 22. You're 22. My yeah, God. I was born in 1990. Wow. <laughs> Woo. Wow. That is unbelievable. 1990. Man. What was I doing in 1990? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Not much. Uh, that was very productive. I was a terrible human being in 1990. Like if you saw me, I was 22 years old. I was your age. In 1990, so I'm double your age. If if you had seen me in 1990, like out at a bar or something, you'd go, well, "That kid's not gonna make it." <laughs> <laughs> I was out of my mind. It was that guy calling you Artie Wang. Yeah, yeah, that guy, day. right? That guy. <laughs> that guy. I had guys like that hanging around me. My, <laughs> but dude, like, like you know, like getting like cocaine, like the kind of cocaine that was so good, like, like, like I would hit myself in the face. Like, <laughs> That guy's hitting himself in the face on cocaine. Uh, no, so you're 22 and you're a comedian. Yeah, yeah. And you're a, you're a, you're an established comedian. You you got a lot going on. Yeah, I got some things going on. Now t tell me how that happens. So did you go to college? I never went to college. No, Where'd I've never been inside of a college. Where'd, in my you, life. <laughs> Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school on Long Island in Comac. Comac, in Comac high Long school. Island. Yeah. So how does a girl uh, decide to? Well, how long you been doing comedy for? Not long, about a year and a half. So you start, though, when you're just over 21 years old. Yeah. What makes you do that? I just always wanted to do it, and yeah. I was always writing stuff that I thought funny was funny. Stuff, yeah, right? and Jokes. I never actually did it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just started, and it just kept going. You started just, going to open mic nights and yeah. stuff? Yeah. In Long Island? No, in the city. In the city. Because I moved out of my parents' house on Long Island when I was, like, 19. Okay, and you yeah. moved to the city? Yeah. At what part of the city? I moved to Williamsburg, Brooklyn, to Brooklyn. first. Which is kind of a hip, hip <laughs> right. area, right? You know? Yeah. And uh, and you started doing clubs there? No, no. I started working, like, in the city. Like, I took, like, a little class at Gotham. Right. And then I was just doing open Who mics and, class? like, little shows. Um, Jim Mandrinos. <laughs> <laughs> I went to that class, too. Chris started that way, too. <laughs> Jim Same exact way. Yeah, we're free. I know Jim Mandrinos. He's a good guy. I mean, he teaches a comedy class. So what do yeah. they teach you? I've never even heard or seen it's a stand-up. Like, in a stand-up comedy class, what do they teach you? They just teach you, like, they don't obviously teach you how to be funny or, like, they don't teach you. They just kind of tell you the ins and outs of it. Like, <laughs> oh, you <laughs> go to <laughs> open mic. Madrina's got something with a high and goes, <laughs> Let me tell you something, guys. <laughs> I don't always look like this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean he tells you the ins and outs? Or like, he tells like you, they, like... What does he say? They tell you, like, oh, you know, go to open mics, meet as many people as you can, like, just little things, and, like, What do they charge day, you for that? A lot of money. Four, $450, 450 for eight weeks. Oh, my God. They try to teach you, like, techniques. They teach you techniques. You know? yeah. What's your technique? And then what, they, do they, what do they teach? They have Name you one go up on are. stage every class. Yeah. And perform in front of the class. That's hard to do. Don't hold the mic cord. Uh, That's a technique. Yeah, don't hold the mic cord. Move the life. mic stand. <laughs> I love doing that. <laughs> What's wrong with holding the mic cord? I don't know. That, that was, was, was his rule. rule. Yeah. Was it really? Yeah, it's a, that's a rule I remember. Well, it's work for him. <laughs> 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 no, I, but, and I like Jimmy, but I'm just saying, I don't. I never heard that before. Like, well, I don't know what's wrong with holding the mic cord. I don't know. I think I think when you're first starting out, people might think that it makes you look it's nervous. It's a nervous thing. Yeah, yeah, like it's a nervous, like uh, you're pacing back I guess and forth. I, guess, I don't know, but anything. sometimes, you know, Tony Bennett holding my. Uh, well, whatever. Uh, I don't care. But <laughs> Chris this, is like, who's Tony Bennett? <laughs> I know Tony Bennett. Yeah. <laughs> no, but so name one like sort of technique, like 
when you're up there, what kind of critique would he get? I'm fascinated by that. I think it's a scam. I don't even know. What do you do? You remember any of it? Techniques. Like, like what's your te technique? He told you. Well, well, like you know, honestly, four hundred and twenty-five hours to, <laughs> to take the mic out of the stand and then put the mic stand behind you. You should ask, you know, That's you, a should technique. Ask, you should ask, forget stand-up comedy. How do I open up a stand-up comedy school? Because that seems to be a lag. <laughs> That's, I mean, the people who teach them, I mean, some classes are good. I, I feel like, you know, stand-up comedy, as we all know, you got to just do it. You got to fail. Right. That's yeah. the only way to learn. You have to fail. To fail. Absolutely. You got to yeah. go out there and bomb. No one's going to teach you that. But at least the guys like, you know who teaches stand-up comedy class? Joe Matarese. I know. He's pretty, but he's... He and he's he, admitted to me when he's drunk, it's a scam. It's a, but, <laughs> but at least but at least with Matarese, he doesn't tell you, oh, this is how you should do this, or yeah. this is how you should do that. He tries to just give you the confidence as a new comic. No, yeah. I like about Joe is, like, yeah. he'll tell me about guys in his class, he'll say, there's some people who don't even realize they're funny. Like, he sort of teaches people who are inherently funny. Like, you know, you, right. can, you, know, you can just get up there and just yeah. tell stories, be yourself, rather than be jokey. Right, well, right. That, that kid, when we did that, um, I think it was Count Basie Theater, that kid that went up and played the piano. Yeah, yeah. Murdered. Really? He was, was one of Matarese's students. He, oh, I know he played the oh, piano, that's so right. that's kind of... I thought he was from there. I thought he was from... Yeah, but he was Joe Matarese's student. Oh, at really? first, I wrote him off. I was like, you playing the piano? But then he was actually pretty good. <laughs> as soon as you see that, you think, yeah, yeah, it's, like, uh, uh, it's funny. Uh, like, some people think that, like, uh, guitar acts and stuff yeah. that could suck, but then then they're hilarious. Yeah. There's nothing worse than following a guitar act, man, That because they destroy. You mm -hmm. can't. They always destroy. It's hard. Well, what, like, that, that's what I would teach in a stand-up comedy class. I would say... Well, I mean, I, you know what? I, it would be hard for me not to be dead honest and go, stop doing this. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I would say, I would say, I'm going to take you 400 bucks, and I'm going to let you, this is going to be a lesson. Never do this again. This is a lesson. Bye. You just got See robbed. You, <laughs> you just got robbed. You're beat. Well, that used to happen sometimes. Well, you, you, would, you would buy drugs. You'd give the guy $400 and, and watch the nights go, you beat. <laughs> and then, what am I going to do, chase the guy? <laughs> That's what I would do. i go, you beat. And then this is life. But no, I, I, that's a very cynical way to look at it. But Yeah, but I mean, there was a guy, I remember there was a guy in my class, he was like 65 years old. Right. Never touched the stage. And yeah. they were like, and Jim was like, what, you know, what's your, what's your goal in this? He was like, to be the best comedian ever. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was like, by the time you get a Letterman audition, you'll be dead, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, yeah. where, do you, where do you play mostly, Carl? Do you do the road? I don't do the road. No. I do like, kind of like shows in bars, and I do shows in clubs, too, because I'm still technically starting out. You know, right. like a year and a half in, you're not playing the biggest clubs in right, the city. Right, of course. No, that's like still, that. you're still a baby to yeah, us. Yeah, so you it's kind of just the beginning still. Now, you meet Chris Stefano, Yeah. Which I'm sure eventually will be something you write in a book that was a horrible mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I yeah. Now, Chris goes away Chris now. Is guy, uh, Joe Matarese told me about Chris originally. Chris and I know each other because we've been working together on the road. And Joe said to me uh, when I came back from my, myself... <laughs> myself exile for a year and a half said uh, I've been working at Caroline's a lot with this kid Chris DeStefano was funny and um, I was looking for somebody to maybe come out on the road yeah. and open uh, and uh, I played there and I saw Chris so I know Chris and he's a little older and he's a little more established but so how do you two guys get together he sees you and we actually were at a comedy show when right? we met okay and it was the worst show ever it was like in a basement in Queens mm -hmm. and nobody showed up except for the comedian it was an open uh, mic it was the worst ever it was just me you and Jimmy Andrino, so the only thing he <laughs> no, Jim wasn't there. Jim couldn't make it. That is brutal. <laughs> the like open, mics, open mics are a brutal thing. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're they like are, yeah. so painful. Yeah. So you meet there and you just kind of bomb? Yeah, we met there and then he asked to drive me home. And I was very like, nice. yeah, stranger, let's go. <laughs> and I like got in the car with him. I didn't even know him. Well, you seem to be very adventurous. You're very independent. <laughs> you, know, you left home young. Yeah. No college, home. no college, met, right to the city. Met Chris in a basement. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, That's it. A questionable basement in Queens. <laughs> now, you, you, you dyed your hair red. Right. Now, when did that happen? And like why? five years ago. In high school, you did? Yeah. This. Now, why is that about? Is that just to, to stand out or? I don't know. I kinda... To make your Italian father have palpitations? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I met your father. He's a good man. Yeah, he's a, he's cool. Does he like he's the red He's cool hair? with it. He is. Yeah, okay. he likes. He's used to it by now. At first, yeah. they were like, "Oh my God, are you serious?" Yeah, I think, right. but. <laughs> Now yeah, they're like used to it. You're very sort of, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're not like a crazy person. Right. But when uh, parents see that, I'm sure they're worried, are you becoming a crazy person? Oh, forget it, yeah. <laughs> but I was working in hair salons for a oh, long okay. time. And I had blue hair, I had green hair, I had everything. Right. So this was like just the one that I stuck Do with. Do you incorporate it into your comedy? No, no, not really. Good, that's good. I, Usually, I like that. I like that when there's something so obvious and you just don't mention yeah, it. Yeah, I just don't even establish it. Because right. it's like, you know, what am I going to do? But people are always like, I thought you were wearing a wig. I was waiting for you to rip your wig off on stage. <laughs> yeah, so I bet I a lot of people are.
were to... waiting. To, that's what's great about it. A lot of people are probably waiting. What are you going to say or do about that hair? Like, yeah. to me, you know, that kid who won the last comic standing who had cerebral palsy? Oh, yeah, Josh uh, Blue or something? Okay, yeah. yeah. Like, to me, I would never mention Josh I had Gray. cerebral palsy. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't do one yeah. joke about it. I just, like, right. do jokes about, you know, DVRs and stuff. <laughs> well, that's like my father. My father, the first time he met her, we were at a comedy show. Right. And my dad says, that's your girl? And I said, yeah. He goes, with your red hair, tattoos? What? Come on, you can't bring that home. What is that? And I said... He said, what's her last name? I said, Acalina. He goes, she's Sicilian? I said, yeah. He goes, invite her over. <laughs> right away. It's like, that's all he cared about was the Italian last name. He's yeah. like, she could, got... be, she could be on heroin, but you know what? She's Italian. Get her over. You got tattoos? Tattoos, too? Yeah, I have a lot of tattoos. A lot of them? Yeah. You have like a sleeve or something? I have a half she, a Show them, Carla. You got nice I don't ones. Wanna, I never, I've always off. seen you just in a jacket. That's true. Yeah. That's don't all right. You don't have to. Mic. She's covered in beautiful tattoos. I'm covered in eczema. Right. <laughs> I got a bunch. Now, when do you get the tattoo? When do you do that? I started getting them when I I was like, this is bad to admit, but I got my first tattoo when I was like 14. I mean, again, the Italian father thing, what did he, what did he say? He wasn't happy about it. No, I know. He wasn't happy about it. <laughs> I mean, my God. I just was kind of like, oh, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm okay. <laughs> and my mom's like, let her do whatever she wants. She's a nice girl. Now, your mother's fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is very They're just like, as long as you're happy. We don't care. You know what happened with me? I was on the table to get a tattoo. I was drunk off my ass in New Orleans <laughs> in the, in the mid-90s. True story. And I was going to get a tattoo. And the only thing that made me not get a tattoo was my Italian mother screaming at me. True story. I come home that weekend. My mother and sister both got tattoos, and they showed it to me. Oh my god! My mother got a star on her ankle. My sister talked her into it, and I'm like, I I I'm down here not getting a tattoo. And mostly, I was gonna get one. With I was gonna get one that I realized I don't have muscle tone, <laughs> and that's key with a tattoo. Now you just have eczema, Chris. I, I got like, eczema, Chris psoriasis, psoriasis all over my body. Do you really? I got it everywhere. I, well, not everywhere. I, I got it for It's better for comedy. It's better. I'd rather have eczema <laughs> than tattoos. I can make fun of it. Itch, you know. I um I, I don't know what it is. I, I've I've been getting them on and off since I'm a teenager. She got her first tattoo when you were 14. I got my first bout of dermatitis. <laughs> now, is it true? Is it true you did your hair like that because you saw the Great Gatsby? I saw the Great Gatsby <laughs> yesterday. I woke up. I said, you know what I'm gonna do? Lean on Leonardo DiCaprio comb over. It works. Did you like it? It works. Well, right. she, as long well, as she says it's all right. Can I tell you? Do you like it? I do like it. I've been telling him to do that for a long time with this really? hair. Really? Yeah. Okay. But today he posted. I don't know if you guys saw his Twitter today. He posted three pictures that he, like, took of himself. Like, he was posing, and I called right. him up hysterically. Laughing. I'm like, you can't be doing that. One of them was like, my shirt off in the bathroom. He had his shirt really? off in the bathroom and, like, pouting I was his excited. lips as if he wasn't taking his own picture. I was excited about the new look. Is that the, so how long did it take to do your hair like that? I, I just wet it and combed it over. Old school. Right. Yeah. She, well, she then she styled I, it like this. I went in with But this is a big thing for me. It looks good. professional. It looks nice. I appreciate that, because I've had the same haircut for... Five years, so and it's, it's about ten minutes of my opening routine. It's about my haircut. So, no, so this no, is a big step. This is a huge step, comedically, personally, well, it's emotionally. Worked for, it's worked for DiCaprio. Oh, uh, yeah, well. What, uh, how was The Great Gatsby? I liked it. It was so good. I took my mom. Her and my mom, we Did all Did you ever went. read the book? No, I never read the, yeah, book. the book. Again, is... I just... And the book is pretty short, though. It's not a, it's not a long read, the book. Yeah. The book is great, because it's so mysterious. I just don't think... The one with Robert Redford in the 70s. The, the, you didn't like that, right, Danny? The one with Redford and Mia Farrow? No. It's the one in the 70s. I don't think... Did you see this new one? Not yet, no. Yeah, no. I don't know. But what was good about it? You just liked the romance of it? It was cool. I thought the way they New did York, it was beautiful. that time period, yeah. Yeah, I like that era. And also, they incorporated, like, music that's popular now, like Jay-Z Jay and stuff. Like, right. in that era. Era, it was right. really, really cool. Baz Luhrmann seems like a real uh, showman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as my father would say, he seems like a bit of a showman, that guy. <laughs> uh, so now, how is it going? You guys are dating in the comedy world. I mm -hmm. see you sometimes at the clubs, and you seem very happy. Is is does that present challenges for you guys, or? I think it actually helps us out that both of us are kind of in the are you same. Are you supportive of each other? Yeah, we're yeah. supportive. We know what each other's going through. Like right. if one of us has a bad set or something. We know what we've both been there before. It's brutal. See, I, yeah, I, I've, I've tortured women with that. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I've never been with a, a girl on a long-term basis uh, that was a stand-up comic. I've had a couple of one-night stands with uh, girls who were comedians on the road, and. Uh, I just did not, you know, I, I'm scared to have sex with a funny girl because I just don't want the review. I don't, I don't want a funny, I don't want a funny bad review. Like, I just want to, I want a stupid girl who's not funny to give me a review. Now, like, I don't mind a, hot, a smoking hot stripper who's retarded. I don't care what you say. No. He wasn't named Fatty, I, you know. But, but like, I don't want Sarah Silverman reviewing my sex with 
so uh, now, what's what's the goal here? What uh, you you gonna get on television? You wanna mm -hmm. like what do you want to do in this evil business? Yeah, <laughs> I like. We both. I mean, he's been on a couple TV shows longer than I have, but I just recently. Well, that's the thing. You've you've had a lot of success in the sense that you're on a show on MTV now. Yeah, definitely. Well, Girl Code. Girl Code. It's right. been on for three weeks. So far, it's getting good ratings. And so good it's reviews, guy code so. only girls. Yeah, well, actually, and Chris is on girl code. I'm <laughs> on yeah. guy code. Yeah, well, He's with this comb code. over, they put me on girl code. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Chris on girl code. Actually. What'd you do? I saw Chris on girl code. On girl code. Yeah. I did. Oh, he did, he did a guest thing on girl code. No, I'm, I'm a cast member of girl code. <laughs> oh. They said, look, Chris, you, you you float the line between guys and girls, so we'll throw you on that show no too. No kidding. That, yeah, I swear to God, I'm one of the guys of girl code. That's great. How many guys are on girl code? There's uh, what is it, four of us? Yeah, I think there's. Four yeah. of you guys. Well, listen, I, I'm watching uh, the Jonas Brothers. Uh, I'm watching Married <laughs> to Jonas, so maybe I could switch over to Girl Code. There it is. Is that you a good should. show? Oh, Married to Jonas is fantastic. Is I've been, I've been talking about it incessantly. I just, I just want those kids to work it out. I just, uh, I just <laughs> and I know they can. I know they can. There's a lot of obstacles because his, his wife, uh, Danny, I call her. Her name's Danielle. I call her Danny. <laughs> she, uh, you know, her brother wants to get in the music business, and now they're going to have maybe him open for them on the road. I think it's a bad oh, that's idea. A it's a bad idea. That's always a bad what idea. What channel is that one on? Uh, the E Channel. E Channel? All right, gotta watch Pop it. Culture. That's all right. Yeah, uh, yeah so, but no, I, I listen, I mean, uh, I could easily fit you guys on the Diva. Yeah. Girl Code, uh, Married to Jonas, <laughs> then Girl Code. Married now, what about Jonas. Guy Code? Who, who didn't make the cut on Guy Code to get on Girl Code? Well, no, well, here's, here's what happened. The guy that created Guy Code and Girl Code is the same guy, this guy Ryan Ling. And actually, that's where they saw her. She was doing a show with me at Caroline's, and the guy Ryan Ling from Guy Code came and just was watching, you know, didn't even expect her to come up, and she came up and she killed. Right. I was like, I'm going to put you on Girl Code, and, and that and that's how she got on. Well, and I had an audition and no, everything. Yeah, first. but, but I'm, yeah, no, you had the audition she got, but I'm saying that's where the guy first saw you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you caught his eye because you killed. Nice. And then, and then he, um, but but nobody, I didn't, nobody got, like, cut from Guy Code to be on Girl Code. Guy Code's over. Oh, right Guy now. Code is over. Yeah, so they're not coming back until next uh, year. So they just took a three of us from Guy Code and put us on Girl Code. I'm going to make a call and try to get both of you on Married to Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd love to. I, mean, I would love to be on that. That's a fantastic <laughs> transition. We have to take a break. We'll come back. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a break. We'll come back with Carly and Chris <laughs> and what it's like being a young stand-up comics dating and being on Girl Code together. <laughs> <laughs>